Welcome to this short introduction to choral counting. Counting is fundamental to learning mathematics. It supports the development of a deep understanding of number, providing a core foundation for understanding place value, how numbers are composed and decomposed, and how they are related to one another. Choral counting is an activity in which the teacher leads children in counting aloud together by a given number. As the class calls out each number, the teacher records the count on the board. This is a 10 to 15 minute lesson, which is pupil led and a rich learning experience for all learners. Choral counting builds number sense, reinforces place value, builds a range of computational skills and develops mathematical thinking. Here are some ideas where choral counting can be used. The counting sequence. Patterns and features of number. Choral counting provides opportunities for learners to be able to identify and discuss patterns of number. Developing place value and understanding. This occurs by exploring patterns within our number system. Here is an example of a choral count that I did with the Primary 1 class. One of the aims of this count was to provide an opportunity for learners to count from a different starting number rather than from 1. This example began at 5 and finished on 42. The count had to be big enough to allow learners to see the patterns in the count. It's important with a choral count that you write down what the children are counting as they count it together. Effective questioning is key. It's about identifying patterns and understanding them. I asked the class, what do you notice about the numbers in our count? These are some of the patterns identified. A few noticed the simpler pattern of these being one digit numbers and that these were all two digit numbers. To develop this further, I asked the class why this was. One of my learners said, bigger numbers need two numbers to show what they're made of, like 11 is 110 and 1, 1. Here, learners saw that the numbers at the end of the rows all ended in zero. When I asked why they thought that was, one learner responded that there were 10 numbers in each row, so the numbers were going up by 10 each time, 10, 20, 30, 40. They also noticed that the numbers in the first column ended in one, the second column in two, and so on for each column. Why was this? Because, according to one of my learners, Big numbers are just like counting from 1 to 10. You just start over again at 1. So when you get to 20, the next number is 21. And when you get to 30, the next number is 31. It's the same pattern. Sometimes, learners will identify a more complex pattern. For example, one of mine saw the diagonal pattern of 11, 22 and 33. Their thinking was that 11 was two ones. Then there were two twos and two threes, so the next one would be two fours. Asking the class if there were any other patterns that could prove this, one learner said that the numbers in that column all ended in four, so the missing one would two, and that all the tens in the row would be four, so it had to be 44. To extend the task even further, I then asked what this number would be. Asking learners to predict what number would appear if the sequence was continued is a fantastic opportunity for them to use the patterns they've found to help them reason and find the solution. The patterns we've discussed are patterns that the learners identified and your role as a teacher is to get them to do that, but also to discuss why the patterns are the way they are. This next choral count was done with the primary four class and it explores place value. One of my objectives was for my learners to see that there are five lots of 200 in 1000. So I recorded the count vertically to encourage them to see this pattern. Please remember that effective questioning is key to not only discuss what the patterns are, but also why they occur. Choral counting allows all learners to participate, regardless of their level of understanding. 
through effective questioning, here are some of the patterns my learners identified and the reasons why they occurred. One learner saw a pattern in the hundreds column, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. They stated that it was just like counting up in twos, although they were counting in two hundreds, and the pattern happened in every column. Many of the children noticed that the first number in each column increased by 1,000 each time. So I asked, why do you think that is? Learners noticed that there were five numbers in the previous column, increasing by 200 each time. So five lots of 200 are 1,000. Further developing this pattern, I asked if they could see a similar pattern elsewhere in the count. And to further elaborate, I asked, why are these patterns the same? This promoted rich discussion. We discussed this pattern and learners identified that the number differed by 1200 as we moved down the diagonal. So I asked, what will this number be? How do you know? Facilitating learners to reason and justify is crucial for deepening their understanding. Listening to learners reasoning about the missing number provided me with an assessment of that understanding. Choral counting can be used to support the development of understanding of multiplication and division. This is a multiplication choral count that I did with the primary six class. In planning this lesson, I wanted the learners to think about the patterns that surfaced through the repeated addition of a number and explore why the patterns existed. After noticing that all the numbers in the count were even numbers, a learner explained that they had to all be even because we started at 8 and we're counting by 8 each time, 8 being an even number. And when you add two the even numbers together, the answer is always even. In each row, the ones follow an 8, 6, 4, 2, 0 pattern. Giving the learners time to talk with a partner, they reasoned that if you added 10 each time, the last digit would stay the same, but because 8 is 2 less than 10, the last digit decreases by 2 each time, so giving you the 86420 pattern. One of the patterns that my learners noticed was that the numbers down the column increased by 40 each time. When asked how they knew that, they said that 10's column increased by 4 each time. Asking why they thought this was, they stated that there were five lots of eight in each row. They knew eight multiplied by 10 was 80, so eight multiplied by five was 40. Effective questioning develops the ability to reason, predict and justify and is key in choral counting as it is in every other learning opportunity. There are endless patterns that can be found within a choral count and sometimes a learner will identify a pattern that you yourself haven't even noticed. This is an example of a pattern one of my primary sixes noticed. If we add the digits of the numbers together, they create a descending number sequence. Wow! The reason to why this was subsequently generated an incredibly rich discussion. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go into here. It never ceases to amaze me the different ways that our learners see numbers and that is why it's so important to question the why as well as the what. In this current climate of remote learning, we can't easily get the children to orally count. However, this approach can be adapted to still allow learners to share their mathematical ideas with the teacher and with each other. Firstly, provide the choral count sequence for learners through Microsoft Teams or Google Classroom, for example, and ask them to respond with their comments to the question, what do you notice? On receiving the replies, you can then add a comment and ask, what do you wonder? And pass it back again. This provides a stimulus for rich discussion back and forward, particularly when everyone's thoughts and ideas are shared between all learners. Here are our tips for success. Planning. Planning is essential. Look over the choral count before the lesson and think of what it is you want to achieve from the choral count. 
Effective questioning. This is key. Plan the questions that you want to ask before the lesson. It's not only about what patterns the learners find, but why they occur. Pupil-led learning. Learners should count together and then they should share what they notice about the count you have recorded. The rich discussion and questioning will come from their findings. All patterns should be recorded on the count and this can then be added to your maths working wall as stimulus for the next count. 15 minutes max. This is a short, rich task that should be done regularly and one which engages learners and helps develop a deeper understanding of the number system. If you are interested in finding out more about choral counting, here are a couple of other resources of information. Counting Collections and Choral Counting is a great go-to guide which will aid you in supporting the development of primary learners' mathematical understanding through choral counting activities. Teacher Education by Design, TED, has a choral counting section within it that provides useful information about choral counting as well as a number of videos demonstrating its use in a classroom environment. Thank you for watching. We hope this short video has encouraged you to try some choral counting with your learners. Please check out Twitter for information regarding future videos and webinars on this and other numeracy teaching approaches from the Fourth Valley and West Lothian numeracy team.